Hello and welcome to the interview. My guest today has literally stared death in the eye after an elephant charged him and gored him in his left leg. He's an accomplished businessman, the godfather of customer relationship management apps, or so-called CRM. He's also the CEO of a startup called C3AI that has just been valued at $3 billion. Tom Siebel, hello and thank you for being with us today. Good afternoon. So you're also the author of this Wall Street Journal bestseller, Digital Transformation, uh, Survive and Thrive in an Era of Mass Extinction by Rosetta Books. In this book, you draw an interesting parallel about how life evolved on Earth and what's happening in the business world. Why is it similar? What are we witnessing today? Well, in the natural world, uh, we've had life on the planet for, say, three and a half billion years. And in the last 440 million years, we have, we've had five mass extinction events, the most recently being this KT extinction where this um, meteor hit the Yucatan 65 million years ago. And I believe order of 80% of the species on Earth became extinct at that time. And after each of these mass extinction events, and they'd, they'd be followed by kind of a mass re-speciation where new species would come to exi into existence. So 86 or 65 million years ago, the diamond dinosaurs disappeared from the planet, and that vacuum was filled by mammals. So that turned out to be work out well for Homo sapiens, at least so far. Now, when you get into the corporate boardroom today, or you talk to the CEO in you know Shanghai, Beijing, Paris, Rome, London, New York, San Francisco, the CEO, the top of the CEO's agenda is this thing called digital transformation. And there's a mandate to digitally transform. And um, it's something critically important and it's fast, it's existential. And I spent a lot of time thinking about this and, and, you know, like what is going on here? So I am, of course, in the information technology industry, and this is a very rapidly growing space. And in that space, we're seeing some new vectors in the 21st century that are changing everything. And these include elastic cloud computing, big data, the Internet of Things, and this phenomenon that we call artificial t intelligence. And at the confluence of these vectors, you find digital transformation. So now you ask, why are people so focused on digital transformation? Well, just like in the natural world, in the corporate world in the 21st century, we are going through a mass extinction event. 52% of the Fortune 500 companies have disappeared in the last 18 years. I mean, they're gone. You know, where's Kodak? Where's Westinghouse? Uh, where's, you know, Toys R Us? They're just, these companies have, have vaporized. And, and it's estimated that as many as, you know, 70% of the companies that exist today will be gone in the next 20 years. So what is going on is there's a rush. We're, we're seeing companies with new DNA, like Tesla, like like Airbnb, like Amazon, that are all about artificial intelligence, big data, elastic cloud computing, in retailing, in transportation, in hospitality, in automotive industries. And these companies with new DNA are, are, are replacing the vacuum by these companies that are going out of business. So that's what I think is going on. So it's all about how well companies will be able to harness those four uh, technologies. Uh, I'd now like to touch up on a statement that you made in your book in which you say that artificial intelligence will be as big or bigger of or as disruptive as was the, the Industrial Revolution, knowing what happened after the Industrial Revolution. It was World War II. What do you have in mind? Is it a, an apocalyptic vision? Well, Daniel Bell published a very important book in 1973. He was a sociologist from Harvard, and he published a book called The Coming Post-Industrial Society. And he predicted in 1973, this is before the mini computer, before the personal computer, before the internet, before the cell phone, if you can imagine that, mm. okay, that, that, that the world was um, <clears throat> about to um, experience a, a, a restructuring of the global economy on the order of the Industrial Revolution, and he called this the post-industrial society or the information age. And in fact, in the last 50 years, everything he predicted has become true. So now information technology has changed the way, you know, the structure of the economy, the way that we work, the way that we entertain ourselves, the way that we communicate, the way we look at what's going on in 
you know, in you know, public securities today, and how much of the public securities are dominated by information technology companies. So it is, it has changed everything. Now, I'd like to have your take on on the trade war between the United States and China. Uh, I just recently heard Microsoft's president Brad Smith say that both countries are on the verge of a tech cold war. Uh, what's your opinion on this? And, and who do you think will, will win this battle? Is it a battle about artificial intelligence, about 5G? What is it all about, do you think? Well, um, Putin said, Vladimir Putin said in 2017 that whoever wins the war on AI dominates the world. I believe that's true, and it will not be Russia. And so it will either be AI, where there are massive investments going on uh, in advancing artificial intelligence for controlling people, uh, social compliance, uh, weapon systems, defense systems, the, the, the weaponization of AI, uh, or the United States. So we are in a non-kinetic warfare with China today, and they are investing billions of dollars. They are educating more people. They are spending more money. They are filing more patents. And I think there's a reason to be concerned. If things continue to go their current uh, the way they are going today, I think China might win this war. Is and this a call China, on the U.S. government to to do a little bit more? I think if the Western governments don't do more in this area, we will be very sorry. Now, let's talk about your startup. I just said it, it was valued at $3 billion. It's called C3AI, and it's helping uh, companies take the digital turn. Maybe give us briefly an example of how uh, you help your clients in that matter. So we've spent the last decade in almost... Uh, three quarters of a billion dollars building a software platform that allows our customers like Enel, NG, Shell, the United States Air Force, um, uh, apply AI to massive social and economic benefits. So this is about you know cleaner energy, renewable energy, more efficient manufacturing, lower inventory costs, lower cost products, more satisfied customers. And so we do this in banking, telecommunications, uh, smart cities, uh, defense, intelligence, um, uh, 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 clean energy. Now, uh, you've decided to set up your headquarters here in Europe in, uh, well, I mean, your, your, he your European headquarters are here in France. You seem to appreciate France a lot. Is this still the case after uh, all the strikes? And why do you think it's a good country to invest? Well, I think that, you know, f Paris is very centrally located. It's a great uh, 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 transportation hub. We, uh, uh, France offers, you know, a, a very uh, deep and rich resource in there of human capital. They have, you know, some of the best research and educational institutions on the planet, like a coal polytechnique, mm -hmm. and, you know, great computer scientists, great data scientists, great human capital. So I think that uh, Siebel Systems, Paris was our headquarters for EMEA. That worked out very well for us. And so Paris is our headquarters for C3.ai as we, as we grow our footprint uh, throughout Europe and the Middle East. Uh, I started this interview by saying that you had literally stared uh, death in the eye. I was referring, of course, to what happened uh, back in 2009 in Tanzania when you were on a foot safari. Uh, you were attacked by an elephant and you underwent 19 surgeries, I think, right after that. And you weren't able to walk for four years. I'm just wondering, on a personal level, um, the man that you are, what, how did it change your life to have to go through that? Yeah, I was on a photo safari in Tanzania and I was attacked and mauled by an elephant and uh, my left leg was gored. I broke a bunch of ribs. The elephant stepped on my right leg, and my foot came off. And so it was pretty challenging. And I spent <clears throat> the next four years, I had 19 reconstructive surgeries, and I walked four years later. Good news is today I'm fine. Uh, but I think it puts things into perspective about, you know, you approach risk a little bit differently, and uh, it also, you know, you... You know, that most of the things that you worry about before an elephant attack that you think they're important, they're really not important at all. And so it helps you prioritize what's, you know, what's important from what's not. So it changes the way you think. And lastly, for uh, those of our viewers who are maybe thinking about starting uh, their startup or their company, uh, wh what's your advice to them? Become a domain expert, okay, in, you know, in the, the idea that... Uh, 
I think that you know whether we're dealing with bioscience, whether we're dealing with information technology, whether we're dealing with material science, travel, transportation, there is no substitute for getting an education and being a domain expert in that field. Secondly, before I started a company, I would go to work for a company that is a leader in that field, okay, and you know learn you know how it's done, how customers are engaged, the language of the business, how contracting is done how customers are supported so that you can be, you know, more successful out of the gate. Tom Siebel, thank you very much indeed for that. It's the end of this interview, but do stay with us here on France 24.